Okay, um, so first thing, this is all my own work, no, nothing to do with my employer. My, my boss does actually know I'm doing it, but she said she didn't want to be in any way related to it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Quick introduction. So, who am I? I'm a well-known troublemaker. Um, many of you will have met me being troublesome at other conferences. Um, I'm an academic research software engineer. I'm a Phosphor G developer, um, developed work on GeoTools, GeoServer over the years. Uh, and despite being a research software engineer, which I thought would be a great job that only involved software, um, I do actually teach some students, or I did last year. So some of this talk is based on that experience. So here's my, once again, a declaration of conflict of interest and a disclaimer. Um, so I am a GeoServer developer, which could be used to provide a GeoPortal, should you want to. Um, I once worked for a company that advised local government and possibly national governments on GeoPortals, um, and anything I say should not be taken as anything about, against those companies. Um, and as I say, my boss, technically she does know about this talk, but she declined to have it listed as one of our outputs for the year, because uh, she didn't think it would be a good idea. Um, I want to thank my students this year that, I, that put up with me um, when I gave them what I thought were seemingly easy assignments to draw a map. Um, just go to the portal, get some data, draw a map. And I discovered that geoportals are much harder to use than you expect if you're not a, you know, if you've not been using GIS for 20 years, a lot of things that geoportals do are really annoying. Much of this talk is based on things that have really annoyed me this year while I've been trying to get some data but some of it is things that my students just completely failed to understand how or why they were being forced to jump through hoops. So, who in the room is responsible for running a geoportal? Cool. So. <laughs> Thank you, Ivan. <laughs> um, so, what do I want when I visit your geoportal? What do I want to get? Okay, I want spatial data, so I'm because I'm a geographer. I always want the map data as well as the statistical data. I don't want to have to go to a separate site to find it. I want all the data that I need. I don't want lots of little short bits of data. And I want it in an easy to use, open standard format. I'm really big on open standard formats and have been for sort of 20 odd years now. I love open standards. Things that annoy me and make me likely to hunt you down, and, um, Having to request each tile separately, download limits, and different results based on which file type I've selected to I want. I don't want to know that half the data you've got is only available if I run Esri. <laughs> it's not helpful. So here are some examples I've collected over the, uh, the past year. Um, I'm going to apologize if anybody from the Scottish government watches this talk. A lot of this talk appears to be really anti-Scottish government. That's just because I live in Scotland and I happen to want to get Scottish government data this year. Um, there are many worse or equally bad data, geo portals out there that I could have picked on. Um, but it happens that it looks like I really hate the, the, the Scottish and UK governments. <laughs> they are quite bad examples, though. So, first question. Are you running a data portal or a geo portal? So, if I do a DuckDuckGo search for uh, geodata for the UK, I end up on this page, which does have the word mapping on it, um, but it's got loads of other data that is spatial data, but it's not behind the mapping section. So to start with, please make a decision on whether you're a geoportal or a data portal. Um, ideally, I want you to be a geoportal because all data is spatial. Um, and I don't really want you hiding stuff away under mapping. Uh, most of these cases, if I want something about criminal justice, I have to go and download the criminal justice data. Then I have to go back to the mapping section to find the boundary data that will allow me to draw a map of my criminal data, justice data. That confuses students terribly, it turns out. Um, they didn't understand why they needed to do that. Don't have a filter that lets pick by format. I don't want to know that Sheffield City Council publishes its data as GeoJSON, whilst if I ask for WFS format, I get Erewash's District Council data, but not Sheffield's any longer. That's not the right thing to do. Um, all of your data should be available in all of the formats that you support. So don't offer me the chance to, to filter by format. 
particularly don't have zip in the list. Zip is not a format. What does that mean? So I actually followed that up. It turns out that means shapefile. Um, but they're too embarrassed to call it shapefile, so they've called it zip. <laughs> um, occasionally, it means map info, oh, tab files as well, it turns out. But mostly, it means they're, sh they're shape files that they've zipped up for me. Um, again, not terribly helpful. But you'll notice that this is the same search set, but all I've done is change the format. And I've got three different sets of answers based on what format I've selected. And the next thing, I want all of your data. I don't want to know about the fact that you flew it in phase one or you flew it in phase two or it was funded by somebody slightly different. Historic it's Scotland funded this flight. I want all your LiDAR data. <laughs> I'm not interested in which phase you did it. And I don't really want to search through the 23 phases of LiDAR discovery that you've done in different parts of the country. I want all the LiDAR data. Give me the LiDAR data. By all means, provide a link that takes you to the phase one data, if that's important. But by default, I want all of it. Um, so again, this is the Scottish LiDAR data. I was particularly interested in getting LiDAR data for the whole of Scotland. Um, it's a nice map interface. It's great. As you can see, I can draw a little box to show the area I wanted, um, which gives me a list of, of results. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a little shopping cart logo next to it. I can click on the little shopping cart 40 times to add each of those tiles to my shopping cart to download. Um, there is, in fact, to save it slightly, there's an add all button. So to get the 400 tiles of LiDAR that I wanted, I had to click the, the add all button 40 times. So I had to click add all, and they go to the next page, click add all, go to the next page. And I don't really want a shopping cart, <laughs> to be honest. Um, it's not really the answer. And then to make it even better, I got to the download, went to open my shopping cart up to pay for it, and it said, here are the four, 397 separate file buttons that you could click to download the data. And I thought, no. <laughs> there has to be a better way. Unfortunately, it turns out the Scottish government foolishly left the S3 bucket address in their download links. So I could cross mount their, uh, I could mount their S3 bucket onto my local machine and just use GDAL on their, on their S3 bucket. Which probably cost them quite a lot of money because I made a VTR of it and then did all sorts of stuff, based, basically downloaded that data a lot of times. But that was fortunate. Otherwise, I would have had to press the button 397 times to download them. And they're not called obvious things so you can tell when you've missed one. They've got UUIDs as their file names at this point. So when you get to the end and discover you've only got 396 files, it's really hard to work out which one you've missed. <laughs> it's hard to see how anybody could make this worse for people to use. Um, so this is a slightly different site. Um, this is when I wanted some English um, LiDAR data because the Scottish boundary goes like that and I wanted a rectangular area. So I had to get some English data to match. They provide a nice whizzy map interface and you could draw a bounding box on it and say, give me all the data. And it returns this helpful error message. You've selected too much, uh, in fact, this is Scotland 50 centimeter phase four data. The, le the limit is 20 tiles per, per request. Now, 20 tiles is not very much. Because <laughs> uh, again, I was looking for maybe 150 tiles or 200 tiles. Um, and it gave me the top, I think it was the top left-hand corner. So. I couldn't even then say, all right, I've had those 20, give me the next 20. I had to carefully draw another box that took in the next 20 and didn't take in the first 20. Disk is cheap, really. You know, if you can't find a couple of terabytes of temporary hard drive, let me know, I'll send you some. I've got them lying around in my office. It's, um, it's, no, don't limit me by the number of things I can download. So a little digression here about formats. So this is once I finally got to your portal and got some data. If it's a raster, I want it as a compressed tiled geotiff, or cog if you prefer, um, that's got all my data in it. I don't want 496 separate TIFF files that I have to put together. I definitely don't want 496 ASCII grid files 
with nine digits of decibel precision on the heights heights um, that you didn't bother to compress. Um, so if it's actual measurements, I want LZW compression or deflate compression. I want the actual numbers. Zero elementary, JPEG is great. If you don't know how to compress your stuff like that, go read Paul Ramsey's Compression for Dummies tutorial. He basically explains how he's taken the city's data set, and I think he went from about 500 gigabytes down to 57 or something. You can make them really small, it's great. Um, if it's a vector file, ideally I want a single file. I don't want a zip file that I've got to take apart and, uh, and unpack and hope for the best. Um, particularly as every so often, if I'm on the lab computers, then the virus scanner check kicks in and says, oh, you can't download zip files because they might contain dangerous macros. Uh, and again, that's quite distressing for the students when they're trying to do their assignment. I want the full attribute names. I don't want them cut off at 10 characters. That's really annoying. Don't use shapefiles ever. I want it in a good projection. So if I'm downloading UK data or uh, uh, British data, I want it in OSGB. I don't want to be forced to take it in that long and convert it back to OSGB, particularly if you collected it in OSGB. You've lost me a lot of accuracy by doing that conversion and going to GeoJSON. I really want something that respects character sets. So if I've got funny squiggles over my letters, I want them to still be there when I download it. Uh, and I particularly want it to be supported by my PhosphorG software. So I want to be able to use it in QGIS, I want to be able to use it in GeoServer. I want to be able to read it with GDAL or OGR. I don't want an ESRI coverage something or other, which British Geological Survey tried to get me to download the other day. It's no help to me at all. And it comes in eight different files and you can lose them. So, those are all the things that really annoy me about it. Is there a better way? Of course there is. So better living through open standards. Go read the OGC standards. They're brilliant. They're easy to use. They've been around for 50 years, 20 years now. They're well understood. Everybody pretty much understands them. There are a few holdouts in the industry that don't read them properly, but to be honest, we're not talking about them here this week. And if you're sitting there thinking, oh, well, that's okay. We've got WMS link for our data. We do standards. <laughs> that's not actually what I meant. So, there's a picture of Scottish deprivation from the Scottish Government web map server. That was good. Okay, it's in blue to green. I don't really like the color scheme, but you know, okay, I can live with that. So, but I only want the Glasgow data, so I'm gonna clip it. So, I open up my raster extraction, clip raster by extent, bot tool in, uh, in, in QGIS. I can select the uh, SIM 2030 data, um, and I can clip it. It's great, isn't it? Oops. It's all gone horribly wrong. I've got red all over my screen now. <laughs> and this really distresses the students when they think they've done something that they learned the week before with rasters, and it doesn't work any longer. QGIS doesn't accept WMS layers as rasters. And that's fair, because they're not. It's a picture of the data. It's not the actual data. But this is unexpected to new users. It's unexpected to experienced users as well, actually. So, WMS is a picture of the data. There are other standards we should be using. It's vector data you're serving. If you use WFS, it's a somewhat elderly, well understood standard now. Um, there's the OGC API features standard. Again, it's nicely standardized. Most people understand it. If it's raster data, please use the web coverage server. Please use version two, because version one was really hard to understand. I can just about make version one work, but version two is much easier to understand. You actually get the data. So do try and make sure you get your axis order right when you do it. So that's what happens if I go to the Scottish um, uh, spatial data, uh, deprivation data of WFS server. So the green one is the WMS map still. The purple one is the WFS server. Axis orders, they're important. Um, so I, I switched it around, <laughs> told, told QGIS to ignore the axis order the server was specifying. It does actually work. I can style it. It's great. I can do selections on it. It's quite tricky to do a selection on it. It would be really nice 
if when I went to the site, it was a link that said download deprivation data for the East Kilbride parliamentary constituency rather than me having to work out how to do that. Um, I can work that out, first time users, not so much. Web coverage server. Um, this is German data, this is wheat growing in Germany apparently, um, I believe, if, if Google translates correct. Um, so it's a nice raster layer. I can overlay it, I can style it, it's great. Uh, can I clip it? Turns out, no. But this is actually on QGIS, not on the WCS. Hey, QGIS doesn't understand WCS layers as rasters, which is a bit weird, and I will try and dig into why that is at some point. If I save that out as a GTIF and then re-import it, the clipping works fine. So there's nothing wrong with the data, it's just the way QGIS sees it. So, conclusions. I'm down to my last three minutes or so. Um, don't restrict your output format to whatever was uploaded to your portal. That's really annoying. Use GDAL, use OGR, use GeoServer, use MapServer. Any of these programs will convert from any format to almost any format. So you're not restricted by what they've given you. Try not to use non-standard formats. Try not to chop up your attribute names. Don't force me to choose what I want by hand. Ideally, I want QGIS to be able to talk directly to your GIF portal and download the data I want. I don't really want to ever have to see your GIF portal. I just want to know what the URL for it is. Don't restrict me to a small subset of your data. Yeah, ideally, you're not short of space. You're not that short of, data, of, of internet capacity these days. To be honest, not that many people are downloading your data that you need to worry about your download limits. Don't require me to download more than I want. So if I'm looking for a particular area, don't say, oh, that falls across four tiles. You'll need to download all of those and clip them yourself. You do the clipping. Clipping is easy. <laughs> you can do it. Don't make my students do it because they really struggle with it sometimes. Do provide OGC standard data endpoints, WFS, WCS, and WMS. Make sure you put all your related data sets together. Don't make me go to some completely different agency because they're in charge of boundaries and you're only in charge of statistics. Just copy their, statist their boundary data over onto your statistics server. So much easier. Provide me a way to filter by appropriate areas. So don't serve your data purely in tiles. If I want, particularly want it in parliamentary areas or um, council areas, that sort of thing. Make sure that machines can talk to your server service for your portal, don't make me talk to it necessarily, and provide a static URL so people can cite their data sources. This didn't used to worry me so much when I worked in industry, but now I'm back in academia, I have to be able to say exactly which version of your data I used. So don't keep changing the data, the, the, the data behind the static URL. Okay, uh, anybody wants to download the slides, they're there, or you can use the QR code. Uh, take some questions. Thanks. That was perfectly in time, and uh, I'm sure we recognized a lot of these uh, annoyances. I did, certainly. <laughs> so uh, the floor is uh, to the questions. Yes. Hi, thank you for the great presentation. Um, we have a geoportal, OGC standards, everything is downloadable, including shapefiles and zip. Sorry, but we, okay. it's yep. there. Yep. It's based on your network and your server. But now I'm in the awkward position that we want to have a data portal together with business intelligence and documentary information in my organization. Yes. And I want to protect my Euro portal, but I want to bring it in a good place in the data portal. So just, just provide links to the WFS endpoints. We all do that. That's, that's all a data point, portal is. It's just a link to a WFS endpoint. <laughs> and I'm, I'm still worried a bit about how I can... Um, we still have a Geo portal. In the, in the new data portal, mm -hmm. but I would need to combine it with something about, well, when, it, when you have um, um, a, an environmental report, I want to include the download links to everything, but I'm, I'm really worried about how the maintenance it will take to, to get everything in the right order. Do you have any tips or things I should think about? Um, I'm probably not the right person to ask about non-spatial data. <laughs> 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 but, um, Again, 
You can produce reports directly out of GeoServer if you put your mind to it. Um, so, you know, my theory is that you shouldn't be doing anything by hand. It should all be machine generated. Um, so convince your users that this is the way to go. They should write some small Python scripts or something rather than a document. <laughs> They might yeah. not like that, though. <laughs> but Kel, I will still keep, uh, will still keep worrying for now, but <laughs> thank you. More questions? I should also say, actually, I meant to say that the Estonian Land Board Geoportal is absolutely brilliant. It's one of the best ones I've found. <laughs> it actually fulfills all the things I wanted. <laughs> So, Ian, what is your experience with data licensing? Because different geoportals have different licenses for using the data. All data is free. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an academic. I steal everything. If it's good enough for an AI bot, it's good enough for me. Um, so, yes, licenses are just a nightmare. Um, you know, the fact that we can't combine ODL data with CC0 data, we were discussing this morning and things like that. It just that makes me cry. Uh, so mostly, I just try and ignore data data source data licensing as much as I can. Um, if the worst comes to the worst, I'll just claim that I've used less than ten percent of your data. It's fair use, um, and that might be enough to keep your lawyers off me. <laughs> Other questions? So thank you very much. The, um, you wish that you get a single GeoTIFF as yes. it's possible. But that means if the data is stored in several GeoTIFFs, because one huge for a whole Great Britain can be too yep. big, that means that they have to make your GeoTIFF for you. So that, OK, yep. I want to download this, and you have to wait for the process to pick all the pieces. Uh, yep join them, and then maybe the day after you get the result. <laughs> most, most of these geoportals will make me wait an hour to get the download of the tiles I want. So I'm not worried about waiting half an hour or 20 minutes and getting an email later to download. It already does that, because it takes that much time to zip up the tiles they've already got. <laughs> um, but actually, you can, if you've got your data stored as tiles, uh, you know, as a cog mosaic, clipping out an area I want won't take you very long. It's well within the capabilities of quite reasonably sized server. There's another question over there. <laughs> Hello, Ian. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation. I have a question. About what is your take on the language of the geoportals? What language do they, do they should they provide? For example, I don't know, Italian geoportal is in English, and some parts is are I'm, in, in, I'm, I know, in Italian, and some parts in English. So what I'm, is the I'm take quite of happy, the as I say, I, I, in an ideal world, I'm only going to your portal to get the WFS endpoint or the WCS endpoint. After that, QGIS can talk to you, and ideally, yes, you've got inspired-based language metadata built into your data set, but I can use Google Translate to change, to work out, you know, that German, wheat fields that I had was all in German, but I could work out they were wheat fields quite easily. <laughs> it's not that hard to translate the, 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 the information. So, yeah, whatever language you want. So your local language is fine for me. Uh, time's almost up. We can take maybe one more short question if there's any. No, then uh, I would like to thank uh, Ian for his brilliant presentation.